Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it momentum broken because that's exactly what happened this last week. We're going to take a look at the S&P 500 on a daily and weekly charts. We're going to look at the VIX. We're going to look at the Japanese yen, which is typically um, shows up as a flight to safety type of thing when the market sells off. And we're going to look at the uh, Shanghai Composite and the German DAX to see how in sync or not they are with the U.S. markets. So let's start off here with the S&P 500. Uh, momentum broken because we had been riding this momentum up here, this whole big wave that had started at the end of December. And we are, we're in the third wave, this uh, C wave of what I believe is the B minor wave. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. I think that we are working because of this three wave structure, okay, because of this three wave structure, this cannot be the first wave move of a, of a uh, major thrust to the downside. Uh, it, it means that we've got something more complex going on, and that's what's happening right now. So uh, right now, my preferred count is that we are in working a flat. It could be a couple of other things, but these this is my preferred count. And so in a flat, you have a three wave, a three wave, and a five wave. Okay, so I believe we had our three wave in the fall. I believe that we just completed our th three wave up uh, here from uh, the end of December. And what is that high week? The week of April 28th. And that now completed um, the uh, minute wave C within minor wave B. And now we broke down with this last week. The S&P was down uh, 64 points. That is a bigger drop than occurred uh, back here on the week of March 3rd, which was 60, I think about 61 points. So pretty big drop. We closed below the entire trading of the last three weeks. The Dow Industrials was down 562 points this week, and it closed below the trading of the last five weeks on the Dow Industrials. So there's a lot of damage done. When I look at my ETF table, all of the ETFs were extremely negative. Most of them were down 2% plus. Uh, a lot of damage being done this last week. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Well, first of all, before I go there, let me just say, what's my expectation for the C wave? Okay, if I'm looking for it to be a five wave move, it can be a pure impulse. It could be some kind of ending diagonal or a diagonal pattern. Okay, I'm going with just as the default, a pure impulse, one, two, where they don't overlap uh, as a move to the downside. Why do I have C down here? Because that's where C equals A. Okay, so that's my initial target. Notice how the B wave pulled right up back to the beginning of the A wave. So the A wave right here, here's where the A wave ended. Here's where it started. Okay, we pull right back up to it, punched a little bit higher than it. And then now I'm looking for it to break down and roll down and complete this C wave, which will be a pretty significant uh, sell off in here uh, in this type of wave structure. Now, there's a good chance that we may have completed the first wave down out of this. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Okay, and this is, yes, this is the daily. I've got several scenarios in here. Let me do this. So here's the first leg down. Now you say, well, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but what we're looking at is the wave structure within here. Okay. Now, the other thing you look at, you notice, look at this, this candle for Friday. It looks kind of uh, like an engulfing bullish type candle. Now, it's not purely engulfing in my mind. It's engulfing from the range standpoint, but it would be much more bullish if, for example, it had opened down near the low of, uh, of Thursday and then rallied for the remainder of Friday. It didn't do that. It, it opened down slightly, sold off. And the interesting thing that happened, let me just show you real quick. Let's go to the uh, hourly view. The interesting thing that happened is, okay, here is the, on Friday, here's the first hour. And I use a 65 minute chart. It gives me six bars for even bars for the day. Okay, so here's the first two hours in here. And we got a turn, second hour bottomed, and then we rallied off of that. 
Same thing happened on Thursday. Here's the first hour, second hour, and then we rallied. But then we kind of came back down in the last two hours of the day, got weakness. That didn't happen. We kind of rallied into the last hour of the day on Friday. It's also interesting that this kind of this turn time frame kind of coincides with the closing of the European markets. Um, and uh, it's about two hours or so into our market. So uh, that happened Thursday and Friday. So right now I am looking for this to be the end of the first wave, looking for a counter trend move back up. Uh, and for some reason, something moved. That's a little better. <laughs> this is what I'm kind of looking for. We'll see how the wave count plays out. But I am looking for a wave too. All right, let's take a look at the VIX. Had a heck of an explosion this week. Came right up through that trend line. We, we came to it here on the 2nd. Sold off. Came right up. Broke through it on, is that Monday? I think it was, yes, Monday. We, we smashed through the trend, but then we came back and closed right at it. Then Tuesday, we opened above that trend line and just kept pushing and got above 20 on the VIX. And then you could see what we had and reversed back down on Thursday and pulled back down to that trend line. So now, you know, right now the jury's out. Are we going to come back and get some support at the trend line and then resume the push to the upside? We'll see. We got a little bit, when I look back over here, when we had this con congestion over here, and where is this? This is December. So when December broke above that trend line and then it pulled back down to it after uh, several days, then it resumed a move to the upside. So we'll see if we get something similar there. Let's take a look at the Japanese yen. Okay, the Japanese yen has been rallying here the last two weeks. And many times the Japanese yen and uh, the FXIY ETF uh, it turns out to be a flight to safety where people have a tendency to move into the Japanese yen. Uh, honestly, I really don't know why. All I know is that it has a tendency to happen. And uh, I mean, so you look back here in the 1st of December, look at the move that happened with the huge sell-off in December. We're now getting this explosion through this trend line, similar to what we had in December. Now, the reaction we had in October was somewhat muted. So, you know, October was a pretty big sell-off uh, in the U.S. markets, but we really didn't get much of a reaction in the yen until December. So I think that's kind of interesting. Let's take a look at the weekly chart and a longer term trend line shows up. And so kind of interesting to see this is back to uh, 2016. OK, so I'm looking to see if this longer term trend line gets shattered. That could have some uh, much longer term implications for what's going on in uh, our markets. So that's a little picture there with the Japanese yen flight to safety. Let's take a look at China. So Shanghai Composite down 139 points of this last week. Uh, you can see we had a big gap down on the opening of the week. Uh, and then uh, it rallied back in the last part of the week, uh, definitely on Friday. I think Friday was up like 3% or so. Now again, Shanghai closes before the U.S. markets open on uh, for the day. Uh, because there's basically a day ahead of us. Now, this wave count that I've got in here that I'm working our way down in a primary wave three, uh, I have not changed that for quite a while. I'm still continuing to hold it. I think this wave two is in. We'll see if uh, we continue to get this sell-off type of price action uh, to the downside here with the Shanghai. Uh, it definitely got overbought, and now it's pulled back. And so I am looking for this to continue to sell off. All right, that's the Shanghai Composite. Uh, we'll let's take a look at the German DAX. The German DAX on a daily basis, it was up 85.91. And again, that closes uh, after a couple hours uh, in the U.S. markets on Friday. So it was up 80, almost 86 points on Friday. But when we look at the, uh, the weekly chart in here, here's the weekly view. Uh, I really, I haven't touched this wave count. I've kept this in here for many weeks. Uh, we've got a resumption now to the downside here, down 353 points for the week. Uh, we are closing, didn't close below three weeks, but the last two weeks of trading. So we'll, uh, we'll see what kind of continuation we get uh, starting on Monday. Uh, but it looks to me like this wave two is done. Now, the interesting thing here is that I do think on the Shanghai, or I mean on the German DAX, if I can grab my marker, here we go. 
I think what we're doing is we ended up doing a 1, 2, and a 1, and a 2, and then and then res resuming back. So now the, the, the wave structure is really that we are working, oh, that's not what I wanted. Lost my marker when I when I hit the escape button to erase it. Uh, sorry about that. So here's one, two. I think what we're doing is we're working a wave count within the third intermediate wave. So that's this one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's what I think we're working, and I'm watching for that to play itself out. All right. That's it for this weekend. Okay, if you felt like the video was helpful, give the thumbs up. If you're not a YouTube subscriber to this channel, hit the subscribe button and get that hit that little uh, bell button there, little icon, and it'll you'll get notifications when I post the video. Uh, and then if you'd like to uh, have more of this kind of information on a regular basis, head over to joehenches.net. Yeah, I should be able to pull this up right here beyond the chart, joehenches.net. And uh, you can uh, check out the membership here or sign up for free uh, video updates that come out twice a week. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on the next video.